Hello there, Pilgrim. Welcome to Green Party Green TV. I'm Kerry Campbell, Independent Green Party. And I'm Brooklyn Kinlay with the Independent Green Party. Green TV focus is Independent Green Party, Green Party candidates. The Independent Green Party, Green TV is about Green Party, Green New Deal, eco jobs for the economy, positive Green Party solutions. Green Party eco-capitalism, prices must tell the environmental truth. The green industrial revolution, solar jobs, wind jobs, geothermal jobs, rail jobs, weatherization jobs, efficiency jobs, and conservation jobs. Building green neighborhoods, walkable, bikeable, pedestrian-friendly, and rail-friendly communities. Joining us today is Green Party Green TV shortly is a green cowboy, Dr. David Freeman. The engineer, attorney, and power company leader will talk about his new book, Making Money with Green Energy. The CIA World Factbook lists the Green Party as one of, the, of one of only four truly national political parties in the United States. According to Ballot Access News, the Independent Green Party is the most active on ballot third party in Virginia in 100 years. The Green Party has won ballot, act, ballot status with strong performances at the ballot box in, excuse me, the ballot box in almost half of the United States. In the rest of the nation, the Green Party must petition to get Green Party candidates on the ballot. The Green Party has presidential petition drives now in three new states. The Green Party's Dr. Jill Stein's campaign started petitioning for a Green Party ballot line in Alabama, Kansas, and Idaho. Dr. Jill Stein's Green Party website and Facebook offer people the opportunity to volunteer as Green Party petitioners. The Stein Green Party page also accepts online donations to the petition drives. Donations go directly to Green Party petition gatherings in Alabama, Kansas and Idaho. The Green Party Watch, a gr key Green Party news website, reports Dr. Jill Stein will campaign four days in North Carolina. Yes, weekly, a Greensboro publication quotes the Green Party's Dr. Jill Stein. The campaign is going awesome. Stein says the Green Party has new Green Party candidates for Congress from the Black Lives Matter movement. Independent Political Report writes that over 100 people from the Black Lives Matter movement are running as Green Party candidates. Dr. Jill Stein, Green Party, speaks at Central Piedmont Community College in Char Charlotte, North Carolina, Saturday at the University of North Carolina Asheville on Sunday and Guilford College in Greensboro Monday. The Green Party presidential ca candidate speaks Tuesday at Duke University. Four other candidates seek the Green Party nomination for President of the United States. Dr. Kent Mesplay is also seeking the Green Party nomination for President. Mesplay previously ran for the Green Party nomination for U.S. Senate. The Green Party Kent Mesplay has sought the Green Party nomination for president three times. A scientist and engineer, Dr. Kent Mesplay, worked a regular job during each of his other campaigns, and there are reports that Mr. Re Mesplay will retire from his day job to campaign full time. SKCM Curry, California Green Party, is a media professional. Ms. Curry is also seeking the Green Party nomination for president. Ms. Curry was a key Green Party leader in a 2008 Green Party presidential campaign of former Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney. Cynthia McKinney was a Green Party nominee for president in 20, 2008. Excuse me. Ms. Curry is recognized in the Green Party and beyond as a dynamic, powerful, charismatic, inspiring speaker. The Green Party candidate Ms. Curry sp spoke at the National Black Political Leadership Conference this week. 
the Green Party's Dr. William Cremo. Dr. William Cremo is a retired political science professor, attorney, and author. Dr. William Cremo has run for other offices as a Green Party candidate. Dr. Bill Cremo is a member of the South Carolina Green Party. Dr. Cremo was awarded his law degree from Northwestern University in 1965. Green Party leader Dr. William Cremo went on to earn his PhD from Indiana University, 1972. The Green Party author Dr. William Cremo has written five books. The newest is The Bias of Temperament of American Politics. It was published in 2014 by Carolina American Press. The Green Party Dr. William Cremo is a distinguished professional, prof, excuse me, professor emeritus at the University of South Carolina. Cremo has filed his Green Party ca presidential campaign with the FEC, Federal Elections Commission, his campaigning at the North Carolina Green Party State Convention this weekend. Documentarian and veteran Green Party candidate for Congress, that's Daryl Cherney, is exploring a presidential bid. Cherney has been a member of the Green Party since 1990. Daryl Cherney is a formal Green Party office holder. The Green Party's Daryl Cherney says he'll formally launch his Green Party campaign in January. Green Party candidates across the U.S. were elected to local office this year. Green TV salutes them all. Green Party Mar Marion County, California co-chair Marnine Glickman was elected to the Dixie School Board. Here in Virginia, the Independent Green Party endorses Wendy Hagland Smith. Green Party was elected to the Adamax School Board. Samba Bal Balhidin Green Party was elected to the Madison, Wisconsin City Council. Green Party Murma Martinez was elected to the New London, Connecticut Board of Education. All righty, now we are privileged. Uh, Dr. Freeman, come on over, please, and join us to welcome David Freeman to Independent Green Party, Green Party, Green TV. Dave, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for bringing your new book, and thanks for all the years of noble service to our country. How have you been? I've been well. I'm happy to be here. I have a message for the folks that uh, I want to have a chance to explain, and uh, how shall we go about it? Sure enough. Uh, well, first off, I just want to say, you know, I wore my Stetson uh, in honor of you coming today and that you are known as the Green Cowboy. Now, how did you pick up that nickname? Uh, my granddaughter thought it was a good name. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wearing this cowboy hat all my life, uh, and it's my calling card, and I've been uh, preaching green all my life. And she put the two together, and it kind of stuck. Sure, it sure does. Uh, uh, Dave's new book, uh, we want to say right up front, is All Electric America, and we're going to get into that a bit more. But, you know, what's going to make reading your book interesting, Dave, is for folks to know about you, where you were born, where you grew up, and uh, what kind of education you have. Please cover those things. Well, I was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, a uh, long time ago, <laughs> in 1926 to be exact, and I've been very fortunate to have lived all over America. I have uh, been the CEO of five large electric utilities during my life, and I have advocated energy efficiency and renewable energy for a long, long time. Uh, uh, and I've now put my thoughts together with those of my co-author, Leah Parks, into this uh, book called All Electric America. Uh, we are at a time when we either start really getting with it or we're all going to cook, maybe oh. our kids and grandkids. I mean, it's just, it's just that real. I mean, the, uh, the climatologists who I think of as a family doctor, are telling us that we're eating poison. Uh, and if we keep eating it and, and, and breathing it, uh, we're going to not have the kind of life that we want to live. I mean, that 
uh, it'll be too hot in most of the world to even exist. Oh. Uh, the oceans will rise. Uh, you know, we're here this morning after uh, Paris blew up last night. I mean, we're living in a world where uh, we don't know whether there is a tomorrow or not. But this one issue uh, overwhelms everything else. I mean, we may work out peace in Syria. We may handle a lot of things. But if we do not deal with Mother Nature, uh, she's going to cook us. It's, it's just that plain. And what we're doing is, frankly, talking. Uh, I mean, with all due respect, and the Green Party may be in the lead in talking, uh, but it's time that we start doing. And here, the basic message here is that uh, we got this awful problem, but then again, we've got this wonderful solution. Uh, the modern day Edisons have gone to work and in my lifetime, we have learned how to harness the sun and harness the wind and, do so, and, and then take that energy and store it so we can use it when we need it and do that in a way that is cheaper. And I want to emphasize the word cheaper, lower in cost than what we're burning today. So we got to be the biggest fools that ever lived <laughs> if we don't switch to, to a, an energy supply uh, that is uh, not only avoids catastrophe, but it's going to give our, us lower prices. And let me just be blunt with you. I know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> I have run electric utilities and I have, so, uh, let me tell you what the cheap power in America is today. It's the dams that we built in the 30s and the 40s and where the electricity is now virtually free because the dams are paid off and there are no fuel costs. Well, guess what? Solar and wind is free fuel. You don't have to be a PhD economist to figure out that if you pay for a solar panel, it's gonna last, and believe me, they last 30, 40 years. When you pay it off in a few years, it doesn't require any labor to speak of or much maintenance, it's virtually free fuel. So what we've got is now the technology to where electricity can be lower in price and we have to substitute electricity for oil and gas in every use. That's why I call my book All Electric America. Oh, Frankly, okay. <laughs> over the next 35 years, we've got to put the damn oil and gas people out of business. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you laugh, you laugh, but, it's, should, a, yeah. but, but it's a life or death matter. And, and we can. We know how to heat buildings with heat pumps and electricity. Uh, we know how to drive automobiles, and the cover of my book is an electric car. We've invented the better mousetraps. We have the ability to use to have an all-electric America. In fact, we were advertising it back in the 50s, and 40s and 50s. In my hometown of Chattanooga, I used to have to shovel coal into a furnace to heat the house. TVA came along with hydropower and electric heat, and we had the all-electric home, and we had the slogan of live better electrically, and we did. And finally, a white shirt stayed white all day long, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't Aww. before. Now, now, you know, the problem is that we, we're assuming, and with all due respect to our president and everybody else, uh, we somehow assume that the marketplace is going to give us the right answer. Well, I've worked in the electric power industry most of my life, and that industry is stubbornly resistant to change. It took, it took a law to get them to put pollution control equipment on the power plants oh, to clean up yeah. the local pollution. And it's yeah. taking a law to, it took a law to get seat belts in cars. When we were, when some, when the DDT was killing the birds, we didn't put a tax on it, we outlawed it. Now, we now know that burning oil and gas and coal is poison. Yeah. Now, why don't we use the one power that civilized people have, which is the power of government, to outlaw it for the future? I don't, don't get me wrong, I don't want to turn the lights off. I'm not saying that we can just stop using what we have, but over a 35 year period, everything new can be renewable and the renewable electricity can substitute for oil and gas more and more so that uh, we can meet 
the challenge of climate and also have lower prices. Now that's what my book is all about. I really think there are two kind of climate deniers. They're the dumb folks that just don't understand the signs. And then they're the smart people like <laughs> us that understand it, but we're still buying a new car with gasoline. We're still doing things that will perpetuate and add more uh, greenhouse gases. He actually uh, has solar panels on his house. Yeah, but he <laughs> flew here in an airplane <laughs> that, that, you, that <laughs> used jet fuel, and uh, and he drive uh, and he drives a car. We're, I do not. We're, we're all sinners, one way or the other. Well, uh, and and the problem is that if you're a good guy and I'm a bad guy, we both cook. <laughs> our, our grandkids both uh, b both have the same problem. So it's going to take mandates, and that's the purpose of my book. The po politicians don't seem to have the intestinal fortitude, another word for courage, uh, to propose what's needed. Why are we fooling around with all kind of indirect measures here that we can't even pass? Let's at least uh, fight for programs that will get the job done. In other words, outlaw any new fossil fuel power plant and let's require the automobile companies to hire and higher percentage of their cars uh, be zero emission. Yeah. I mean, uh, I lay all this out in the book uh, and actually the interesting thing is that 30 states have enacted mandates. Why do you think we have solar and wind power now? It's because California and many other states require a higher and higher percentage of renewable energy. So we know how to do it, and if the federal government doesn't do it, perhaps all the states will do it. But I want everyone in America, under 40 at least, to read this book, because this is your issue. And it's a, virtually a life or death issue for young people because uh, this climate problem has got to be solved if you're going to have a happy uh, life. And the interesting thing is to solve it will save money, not cost money, uh, like a lot of people are saying. So I appreciate the chance to make the, yes. the pitch, and I'll be glad to engage in the conversation <laughs> with you guys. We are, we're pleased to have you on the show. Um, I'm David. Um, would um, we like to um, get your Green Party's perspective on um, federal spending? Here are um, some of the final Treasury statement federal spending numbers for 2015. Well, let me just say one thing. I think this, before we get into this, this issue of climate is way beyond political parties. Oh, yes. Uh, it, you know, uh, the Green Party perhaps has a better idea of what needs to be done than the others, but we need every party to join in this because it is a issue that is, you know, global, not just uh, 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 parochial. And I think it's important that we that this rise above party. You know, we, we, we need to get the American people to recognize that we put most of this greenhouse gas up there, us in Europe. We've done it. China too. The Chinese <laughs> didn't put it mostly up but there. They're just beginning. Africa is just beginning. Okay. We have an obligation to show some leadership here because we're the major polluters. Uh, per capita, we're larger than anyone almost. So uh, America needs to lead, and if America leads, others will follow. And uh, if you're sitting there in Africa, uh, you have every right to say, well, they burn their coal, I'm going to burn coal too. But, we need, but if we show that the renewable energy is actually cheaper, then yes, they, they, they will avoid the bad stuff and, and, and we can win this fight. Oh, uh, so I, like I, I, want, I want this issue to rise <laughs> above politics and, and, and recognize that in, in some sense that none of us is really uh, doing it yet, but it's going to take uh, some laws and some mandates and some real incentives and some understanding that uh, the greenhouse gas issue is an overwhelming issue that cuts across all party lines in all races in all countries. Thank you for that, um, uh, Dr. Freeman. Let, let's just remind them, Brooklyn, uh, you're watching the Independent Green Party, Green Party, Green TV, the show that focuses on 
uh, independent Green Party, Green Party candidates for state, local, and federal office, and positive Green New Deal, eco jobs for the economy solutions, solar jobs, wind jobs, geothermal jobs, rail jobs. With us on the show today is Dr. David Freeman. Uh, Dave, you're an engineer and an attorney, right? Both? Yeah, but I don't admit it. <laughs> okay, good. Very oh, good. Well, what? David, uh, David Freeman's new book, let's uh, plug your book here, Dave. It's uh, All Electric America, A Climate Solution and a Hopeful Future, written by David Freeman and Leah Parks. Did that's, I pronounce the names correctly, Dave? Get that's it, right, and it can be purchased already, even though it's pre not the publication date is January 14th, but you can get it at Amazon uh, for $12.95. Fantastic. And Dave, how long did it take you to write All Electric America? 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I, wow. I'm, I'm serious. Book. The, 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 the book represents <laughs> my own experiences in this field over a 40 year period. It isn't something that I just dreamed up. It, it, as well as Leah's understanding, it is a youthful per person looking at it in modern day, but we, we actually spent a couple of years in actually writing the book, but it, nice. it reflects, uh, as you will see, a, a long, long period of learning by the toughest teacher of all experience. Now, Dave, you've been on Green Party Green TV. This is the third time that I, uh, and we are always thrilled to have you. Yes. Uh, so we know each other. Yes. And uh, so you know that my house uh, is a plus house with solar and geothermal, exactly what you're describing. You know that I make money on my house, $1,200 uh, every quarter. Well, you're a good example of what I'm talking about. To, uh, now, can everybody do this, Dave? Of course. I mean, you know, not some somebody that's renting an apartment building has got to have a community solar business. But let me put it this way. We can have an all-electric America that is all renewable. Now, uh, let's be clear that if you're uh, living in a high-rise apartment building, uh, you, you can't get the solar directly. Uh, but what we, you can buy from a solar co-op, oh, that's right? right. Dave? That's right. And the the truth of the matter is that we've invented a lower cost form of electricity that is absolutely clean, and uh, we're beginning to use it more and more. The the revolution is underway. It's just on TV only on this station. No, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. thank you. We're proud to try. Thank you. Uh, now, Dave, your book. Yeah, uh, let's say the title one more time, All Electric America. Yeah. Of course, you know, I'm a patriotic American. I love to see America in the title. I love that what you're suggesting is, is that our country can lead the way on renewable energy. And make money doing it. And make money <laughs> yeah. doing it. That's and create right. not thousands of jobs, millions of jobs. In other words, we have, in the next 35 years, got to build an electric power system that is all renewable wind and storage and biomass and stuff uh, that's twice as big as the electric system we have but it will replace all the oil and gas we use in other words we got to the, the the remaining oil and gas and coal needs to stay in the ground where the good lord put it oh, i mean if it. if the lord <laughs> wanted us to use that stuff uh, he or she would have made it a whole lot easier to get. You, would, oh, I like you, that. you wouldn't have to chop down a mountain. Uh, you wouldn't have to go out and spill all over the Gulf of Mexico. You wouldn't have to mess up beautiful area uh, of wildlife in order to get it. We have, Mother Nature gave us all the energy we need. And finally, in the year 2015, we have learned how to use it that we need to just deploy that on a massive basis. And it will take less land uh, than the coal does. The reason is that the coal you have to mine every year to get more coal, but the fuel is free. The sun comes here free of charge. The solar panels, you put them out even in the desert, they're not gonna destroy the land and uh, it, it's just one time. And, and you don't have to do any mining. Think of all the land that's been disturbed by coal mining, uranium yes, mining, yeah. all drilling for oil and gas. We can preserve what's left of America the beautiful by going to solar and wind. Make and, it beautiful uh, again. That's right. And, mm -hmm. and think, think of what Washington, D.C. would be like 
if the air was uh, in Los clean. Angeles, if the air was really clean, if, if you didn't have cars burning stuff. I mean, we think we have, we've cleaned up, but we haven't. We still have epidemics of asthma and lung disease. So even as a byproduct, of curing the climate problem, we're going to clean up the cities. I mean, uh, there, there's nothing it's more it's exciting, down. more challenging that we could undertake. And the beauty of it is we're going to save money. We, you great. Know, That's great. See, once the power plants have been paid for, the marginal cost of operating them is nearly zero, and we'll have competitive competing between companies that will get by with prices that are a whole lot less than they are today. I sold electricity for one cent a kilowatt hour when I ran the New York Power Authority and I made 90 percent profit. I had Niagara Dam and St. Lawrence Dam and the power is virtually free. Well, a big solar or wind farm, once you've paid for it and paid it off, it's virtually free. Uh, even, hard, even the environmental <laughs> advocates haven't really focused on the fact that we have got something that is cheaper. And they're arguing that, well, we need to sacrifice. Well, we don't need to sacrifice. We just need to use what we've already learned, and, but we've got a, a big lobby to beat. And that's the oil and gas and coal people. They want to burn it all because they make money on it. Now, we are right now at the end of Green Party, Green TV with David Freeman. Uh, we thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have David Freeman yes. here. We're going to say goodbye now, and hopefully uh, we can go ahead and do another show with David Freeman. Um, this is David Freeman, David Freeman.